Following the release of id Software's legendary game Quake in 1996, an avid community started to cultivate on message boards across the early web. Many were players of the multiplayer side, and the actions and traditions set by this group would go on to form a basis for all future online gaming communities. Machinimas, mapping, in-jokes, and most importantly, modding was very prevalent. Many of today's popular games can be traced back to those days. Counter-Strike and Overwatch having roots within the modding scene, while Team Fortress itself started as a mod. With all this being said, in my opinion, the most important thing to ever come out of this community was Zoid's mod, 3-Wave, Capture the Flag. Being the most successful Capture the Flag mod in all of Quake's history, it popularized the game mode and changed all of multiplayer first-person shooters. This was so important, in fact, that when Valve recreated Quake Deathmatch in the Half-Life engine under the name of Deathmatch Classic, they planned and worked on a port of the game mode Three wave. However, due to unknown reasons, it never saw the light of day or it was even officially discussed. But before we get to the details, let's go back to the start. Id's Quake was released back on June 22nd, 1996 in North America to universal acclaim. Only a little over a month later, Id releases Quake C, the programming language created by John Carmack, used to modify the gameplay found within Quake. And due to the simplicity of add-ons within Id's engine, creating mods was easier than ever. But it wasn't until October 2nd, 1996 that game programmer David Kirch, called Zoid, put up an experimental game mode on his Quake server that involved two teams trying to capture each other's flags with runes that granted power-ups and a grappling hook to move and traverse levels. It was a hit, so much so that when Zoid tried to change the only map capable of running CTF on his server, the players whined until he switched it back. Zoid knew this was a big deal. Work was done to update this new game mode. From October of 96 till July of 96, this mod, called 3Wave, received a healthy amount of updates, receiving custom maps and, due to its popularity, official help from id employees. It all came to an end on July 26th, 1997, when Zoid announced his retirement from the 3Wave project, as id had contracted him to work on the multiplayer for Quake 2. But 3Wave stayed popular with new variants such as All-Star CTF and Thunderwalker gaining quite a bit of popularity throughout the years. Zoid stayed at id until until February of 2000, where it was announced he would work for Retro Studios. He would eventually work at Valve in 2008, and he has been there ever since. So how does this unreleased Valve game factor into this random Quake mod? Well, back in 2003, there was a somewhat famous event where Half-Life 2 leaked, and most of its engine and assets were out to the public. The problem is, the Half-Life 2 content was only a small percent of what actually leaked. Half-Life Source, Counter-Strike Source, and the source code for Team Fortress 2 Invasion also leaked. But what no one seems to talk about anymore is the leak of a folder called WMODs. Now, not much is still known about WMODs. I've even read over 15-year-old message boards claiming that it was Gabe Newell's personal Half-Life build. Wherever it came from, its contents are what's interesting. Half-Life, Blue Shift, Opposing Force, Day of Defeat, and Counter-Strike are seen along with an early version of Counter-Strike 1.5, an early version of Day of Defeat 1.1, and a folder named 3-Wave. Now, at the time, few knew exactly what this 3-Wave folder was, as it was very difficult to get the mod to even run. Now, it did appear to just be a level pack for Deathmatch Classic, itself a Half-Life port of Quake's Deathmatch. Starting a server within this 3-Wave mod caused the entire game to crash, and running any map locally resulted in broken spawn points and almost all of the textures missing. Now, some were able to identify that these maps were the official ones found within the Quake mod 3-Wave. However, the game was in in a totally unplayable state. That is, until this last February. While doing research on the Portal History video I did back in February, I learned about WMODs from an ancient form on the Wayback Machine, and I had to find it. It took me over a month to be able to find the complete folder, and I ended up finding it on a Vietnamese FTP server. But as stated before, the three-wave game was completely unplayable, as it would crash after starting any server. The game was made by Valve, and the few maps I did see were ported over in a Half-Life 1 style, with the few textures that were actually available. So I turned to my genius programming buddy Piston Miner, and within a day, he had the game working. Gone was the crashing, and the game took shape. The grappling hook and runes were now appearing in the maps, and I immediately realized that TF2 manpower mode was just three-wave only not as good. The problem now was the missing textures and broken spawn points, and I've been working since February to be able to recover any and all of the textures that were missing and fix as many spawn points as I can. And I'm pleased to say that all of that has been fixed 
as well. The maps are direct ports of those found in the original Three Wave Quake mod. However, when Valve was porting them over, they changed the majority of them to a Half-Life style. However, the game is in a playable state, servers work, and I'm pleased to announce that you can download and play it right now. Down in the description is the three-wave zip hosted up on Mediafire. All you need to do is extract the two folders within the three-wave zip to your root installation directory for Half-Life. I will be hosting a server for three-wave. This project has been in the works for months, and I'm just so excited some unreleased Valve content can be given out to the community without any problems. You guys deserve it especially for his waiting as long as you have. But anyways, yes, 3Wave is now out. Link is down in the description, and I will be trying to stream it this weekend. I will try and have the server running as long as I possibly can. Servers are expensive, and it's very complicated to run a game that doesn't actually exist on a server. It's, it's kind of complicated. If you like this type of video, get excited. I'm aiming for one of these gigantic projects every month until the end of the year. I have three more lined up, and I'm really excited that you will get to see what I have in store. If you want to be able to see more videos like this, as this video has taken me months, I would appreciate if you could try and support me using my Patreon link down in the description below, but in no way should you feel obligated to do so. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Tyler McVicker. This is Valve News Network. Have a good day. Adios.